Daddy got divorced and mommy got remarried and now I have a stepdad. Ou le beau-père, est-ce que c'est uh, le papa à mon époux? Is it my husband's father? So be careful with beau-père in law, with beau-père in French. But in general, the belle famille, it is in law. My in laws, si c'est plusieurs. If it's just one person, in law. But if you have multiple sister-in-laws, if you have, if your husband has multiple sisters, my sister-in-laws are coming. It becomes an S in-laws are coming. So um, I just needed you to know this, and then um, and so you have this part as far as a polygamous home is concerned, the right terms to use if you want to describe maybe a picture or your family or things like that. You should know which term um, is appropriate for it. And so what if you have someone that is deceased? That's a new term, the deceased. Deceased. Deceased, c'est quelqu'un qui est décédé. Deceased. My deceased father. Mon défunt père. You can say deceased or you can say late. Late. For example, my daddy is of late. So I would say my deceased father. My late father. Oftentimes in Africa, he would hear deceased. It's more used in, in the British um, or Anglophone or English African countries. They'll tell you, oh, my late father, or oh, my late sister, my late brother, you know, he means or. But in more of the Western world, they're going to say, oh, he's deceased. My deceased father. Mm. In the Western world, we say deceased. So whichever you decide to use, it means the same. They all imply the same, okay? Don't sweat it. Late, c'est sec, c'est vrai que late en général, in general, means en retard. But in the context of this, of as far as family is concerned or death is concerned, it becomes un défunt. A défunt soeur, a défunt tante, mon défunt frère. And so you can say my late brother, in my case, my late daddy, or my deceased daddy. But in French, sometimes we hear people say défunt ou uh, feu. Mon feu frère, mon feu père. Comme feu, f -E, comme ça. Oh, mon feu père. Mon feu oncle, it means défunt. Um, you know, so it's deceased or late. Because we know that death Ça signifie la mort. Death. Death, ça signifie la mort. So, it, disease comes from death. Um, yeah, it comes from death. Just so you know. You know. And then you have, um, if, so that's the part, you know. And then what about if you're married? or you're engaged to someone, that's another term um, to be engaged, engaged, engaged means you're uh, a fianced or you can say my fiancé, okay, my fiancé, it's okay if you say my fiancé, engaged means you're, uh, you're engaged to someone, je suis engagé avec quelqu'un or oh, with quelque chose, but oh, I'm engaged. So I'm a fiance. I'm I know I'm a fiance. Or I have you know fiance, and we sometimes we add it. Oh, I'm fiance. Or oh, I'm engaged already. Pour dire je suis fiancé. Oh, I'm engaged already. I'm engaged to be married. Okay, I'm engaged. Say I'm engaged. Parce que je suis déjà fiancé. So it says I'm engaged. Je suis fiancé. So are you engaged? Oh yes, I am. I'm engaged. Je suis fiancé. So you know. And then um, remember, I talked about husband wife. I talked about uh, man woman. I talked about um, um, spouse qui est 
l'époux ou l'épouse, l'époux ou l'épouse, it stays the same. It is spouse. Spouse. Unlike in French that you say mon époux, mon épouse. In English, it's the same. Spouse. My spouse. Ça signifie mon mari. And mon mari will present as my spouse. Ça signifie que sa femme ou son épouse. And so spouse, it's one of those, um, those words in, in English that does not change, that can imply either or. So get to know them so you don't get confused. Ah, oh, what is épouse and what is époux? And you're thinking that you're two different definitions, but no, they're not. They're not. It's just the same word, spouse. Okay? It's spouse. It means his spouse. And you can say son époux, son épouse, his spouse, her spouse. His spouse, her spouse. It's the same thing. It doesn't change. Okay? And so, um, this is, this is family. This is family. If you, in the worst scenario, you have enemy, if you must, you know, if you must have it, if you must know it, it's enemy, enemy, you know, that is in the worst scenario that you have know how to spell it, enemy, okay? And so, I hope that, are there any words that you're learning for the first time today that you get to understand what it means? Today, I said it was more bilingual, okay? So you can get to understand what it implies so you can pronounce it the right way and spell it the right way. I hope that there are certain words that you're learning today. I hope that I was helpful as far as um, family is concerned today. I hope that you get to understand. If you have any questions or if there's something that you do not get right, and please just write to me. I will be more than happy to help out to explain more as far as um, family is concerned. And I told you all that there's immediate and there's external. And so if someone asks you about, tell me about your family, you can ask them, oh, do you want me to explain about my immediate family or do you just want the bigger picture? That means the external and everything. If you want me to immediate family, well, I have my mother. And you have my father. And there is no R after, fa after the A. There's no R here in father. Mother and father, c'est signifie mère et père. Tout court. Mother, c'est mère. Father, c'est père. Whereas mommy and daddy, c'est papa et maman. Ça, c'est pas maman. Mother, c'est pas maman. Dans le littéral sens, mother, c'est pas maman. Mother, c'est mère. Father, c'est pas papa. Dans le sens littéraire, father, c'est père. But mommy, as mom, c'est maman. And daddy, is papa. Dans le sens littéraire, le sens strict des mots. C'est vrai qu'on mélange, we have a tendency of just mixing either or, but in the normal definition of it, the strict definition of it, or translation of it rather, mother is mère, father is père, mom is maman, dad is papa. Get that, get that, okay? It's true that when we just do our color girl speaking, we just mix it up, but um, if I should correct it, and you should put mom here, I'll give you a zero. Because that's not the literal translation of it, okay? Just so you know. Um, so this is actually about family. And of course we have as well, even the adopted. Adopted is also family. If you do have an adopted sister or an adopted brother, it's adopted, someone that is added, adoptif, mon papa adoptif. Maman adoptif, frère adoptif. It's adopted, it becomes adopted, not you know, adopted. But you can say, oh, I want to adopt a girl, je vais adopter une fille. Mais quand c'est adoptif, it is already adopted. Adopted. So, um, so this is a polygamous home. This is, um, you know, even some of the terms imply, even if it's not polygamous, it's just a recomposed home, 
okay? And so it's not just necessarily polygamous because you can have a stepmom that, or a stepdad that's not necessarily a polygamous home. It's just that it's recomposed or it's a, you know, it's kind of different home, which you're going to look at now, different relationships. Okay, so, um, so these are, um, these are it. I hope that it helps. I hope that you've learned something and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Ta